Okay. All right, uh, here it is on June the 23rd, 2022. And uh, we harvested our squash garden, survival garden this morning. And put up a video, or we're trying to. And now I'm going to show you how to cook. One of the ways to cook this Burgess butter cup. Now that's a spot there that began somehow or another chicken probably did that, but this squash is still good. But that's the Burgess butter cup signature way that it looks. This is a squash that was developed back in the 30s. It is from combining a couple of other kind of squash. I think it's known which two squash, but I can't recall. This is also where chickens pecked it, but they haven't destroyed the squash. And that's why we're picking this one to cook, because it won't last terribly long with these wounds in it. Um, okay, this is going to be the microwave method of cooking the squash. You can also do it in the oven, and you can also do it in the... Uh, in the um, frying pan. Alright, I want to point out my ingredients here. This is stevia. You can use pretty much any kind of sweetener you want, but we prefer stevia because it doesn't raise your blood sugar like regular sugar. Uh, this is very good stuff. Uh, some people say they don't like the taste of it, but I don't care. I mean, it tastes great to me. That's 100% stevia right there. If you want to get the real deal, uh, you order that on the internet and you'll get and it's a, it's a There's a lot of it in that package too, and it's a, what was it, Debbie? $16 yeah. or something like that? $16.92, I think. Four ounces right there, so that's a quarter of a pound. And that goes a huge long way. Let me get, I'm going to get the little spoon that comes with it and I'll show you how you see that little tiny spoon right there look how tiny that is that's equal to um, a tablespoon of sugar or more it's very sweet so this is you get those little packets of stevia with there'll be stevia and maltodextrin and all that kind of stuff they're not even pure stevia this is the real deal here uh, I hope I don't turn too many people on to it because I don't want it to run out because we we really like it. Salt, whatever you got. We like this Himalayan pink. Cinnamon. And butter. Okay, these are our ingredients. Okay, step one. Cut the squash in half. Pretty big boy right here. Let's see if we can do a good job on getting it cut in half. I don't think I'm getting it quite cut in half properly, but we'll live with it. All right, a lot of people recommend taking the seeds out the seed cavity. But I'm going to tell you right now, this is all edible. And these seeds right here, delicious. And there's no need to do that. You're just wasting it if you take that out and throw it away. In my opinion. So I do like to loosen it up so that I can get my other ingredients in there. See, so you can. This is what a lot of recipes recommend that you take this out. And we're going to take it out, but we're going to put it right back in there and let it cook. This cavity here is where we're going to put our ingredients. But I just ate one of those seeds. I, I'm not like everybody. And the squash itself, I just tasted a piece. It's quite edible like that. Very simple recipe. Bunch of butter. Don't let anybody tell you butter's bad for you. It's good for you.
They lie to you. Tell you eggs are bad for you and butter is bad for you and all that. That's because they want to sell you a bunch of crummy stuff that they're making in the food factories that are no good. Positively harmful. Cinnamon, if you like cinnamon, and I do. Salt. Now you could put salt afterwards to taste, but I put a little bit in here right now. And I put that back myself. Put it in the pan. I don't have a pan big enough for this, so I'll just let them sit. Keep it there. I just let them sit uh, like that. Stevia. Oh, I forgot the stevia. I'll tell you the truth. You don't have to put the stevia. This is pretty sweet as it is. But yeah, we'll put... Debbie just reminded me I forgot the stevia. We can put a little bit of stevia in there. And we can always put more, more of this sweetener in when we get through cooking it if we like. Because this stuff here goes a long way. Okay? And uh, that's what it looks like in the jar. And this stuff, we do our coffee with it and everything. Into the microwave. I'm going to start it at five minutes. Now, this is a pretty big squash, and we'll pull it out in five minutes. So we'll take a little a little break and we'll come back to you in a minute. All right, here's five minutes right here. All right, people all ask me when I tell them about this, how long do we cook it? How long do we cook it? You cook it until it's done. Because all of the squash are different sizes. A little bitty one's not going to take it long. A big one's going to take a long time. But... How do you tell if it's done? That's a very easy thing. There's a fork. We're going to poke on it. See how easy that gets? Now this right here is harder, see? That's not done yet. These over here, this one here, is definitely not done. See, I'm having a little trouble. The done, When it's done, it goes easy in. Okay? Look at how good that looks. So, now what we are going to do though is we're going to turn it around a little bit and get a different, a little bit different angle in the microwave. Oops. Oh, whoa, that was hot. This doggone thing here, this pan's not big enough is the problem. Okay. I can tell you right now, you ain't going to get it overdone. So I'm going to give it another five minutes. It won't hurt at all. Be back in a, in a few. And while we're waiting for that Burgess buttercup squash to cook in the microwave, I pulled out a piece of it that we've had in the refrigerator that we cooked a couple of days ago. And it's cold. And we found out that this stuff was extremely delicious. I think that might be butter, you think, on there? Yeah. Because it was sitting in there and the butter yeah. ran out. Mm -hmm. There's the skin. Skin is edible, too. Um, here's the seeds that I said don't throw away. Um, uh, delicious. I just wanted to tell you. And that is, ab to, to, to me, 
that's a delicious delicious food product now if you're a picky eater and don't want to try anything at all you probably need to go to McDonald's No, you might want it a little sweeter, but this right here is food, it's good food. All we had to do, all right, Debbie, let me have it. Mm -hmm. oh. All right. Well, let Debbie finish it off. She likes it too. I was wondering if you were going to let me have any. <laughs> it's delicious stuff. Put the seed in the ground, hoe it a couple of times. I might have watered it a time or two. Mm. We haven't had much rain, but I didn't do a sprinkler or anything like that. I put it, I take the hose and is water directly on the plant. And there it is. And God took care of the rest of it. That's right. Okay, so I'm gonna I forgot how to turn this off. This red button uh -huh. here. I'll turn this off right now and we'll wait on that other squash. Okay. Alright, we are at ten minutes now. Ten minutes in. Okay. That goes in quite easily there. See there and it goes deep. This one not quite so much. See, this one's bigger. This is takes a little bit more pressure to get it into this this squash. This one here goes in quite easily. All the way, I'm checking all the way out to the rind. See, it's and all the way down. It's just went completely through it then. So. I kind of think this one's done right here. It's a smaller piece because I cut this fatter end right here. So what I'm going to do now is uh, take the smaller one out and uh, now some of the butter and all has run down into here and I'm going to give this big piece here another five minutes and I'm quite sure it'll be done then and this one right here I feel like it's done the butter has kind of soaked in a little bit let me get a little piece here I'm gonna cool it off a little bit Now, to my taste, it needs a little salt and a little more sweetener to it. But, now I don't think you're going to do backflips over this, you know. But, remember, this is my, this is real food, real survival food. And like I say, it's not like going to the Dairy Queen and getting an ice cream sundae and a put a little salt to me. I have they say always oh, trying to get us to try to quit eating all the good stuff. Don't eat any butter, don't eat any eggs, quit eating so much salt. I think they're lying. Break it up a little bit. I, like I said, I don't think that you're going to open up a chain, a Burgess Buttercup chain restaurant, 
expect the public to come knock your doors down but this right here is real food real good for you very tasty to me it's tasty and the, the big thing about this is that'll keep you alive you're not going to get diabetes from eating that probably not going to get a heart attack a little more salt now if you've got some sweetener maybe honey if you want that like I say, we like to use that stevia because we know that it doesn't contribute to diabetes like the Now people ate sugar. Sugar is a honey and all that. That's definitely a food that God gave us, but in my opinion, the reason we got so much problems is because we eat too darn much of it. You know, a sweetener back in the ancient times was something that you found a honey hive every now and then, you know, and it was a something you just had every now and then. It wasn't something you had in every drink that you had and refined down to the white powder sugar, you know. Wanna try it? Hmm? You want me to get you some? Mm -hmm. well, this might be hot. And it's good cold too. Oh yeah. Alright, that's the end of the video on cooking the Burgess Buttercup Squash. And uh, if you see my other videos, this squash family, winter squash particularly, I'll tell you about what, what they mean by winter squash. A lot of people already know this, but winter squash are the squashes that when they get ripe, they have a a rather good rind or, or outside shell on them and they tend to be stable enough to keep them throughout the winter in your uh, place where you keep your food and your uh, your cool room or wherever you keep your food that's why they call them winter squash not because they grow in the winter All right, that's the end of the video on the Burgess Buttercup. We definitely recommend it because it's easy to grow. It's good food. It stores well. And um, it's um, a fairly drought-resistant plant, too. All right, this is Steve Coleman, also known as Gardener Israel. Signing off.